welcome back. I have for you today my bridal makeup tutorial. This is the makeup that I wore on my wedding day. I did practice quite a few times before putting this on my face. I practiced kind of three or four times and did wedding trials, if you will, on myself um, because I knew that I wanted to do my own makeup on the day. I just feel the most comfortable when I'm doing my makeup and I feel like I wouldn't trust someone else to do it, um, but that's just me. <laughs> and I know that for a lot of people, um, there isn't an option to hire a makeup artist or maybe you feel the same as me and you feel like you just really want to do your own makeup on your wedding day. So if you are, this video is for you, especially if you are a redhead. I hope that you find this helpful and like the shades and the products that I use are helpful. I will leave everything listed in the description box below. I'm also thinking of filming a bit of a life update video as my next video and maybe talking a bit about the wedding and the wedding planning process and if you do have any questions that you would like to know if you're planning a wedding soon or trying to get ideas or inspiration uh, then leave a comment down below or head to my Instagram and I will put a question box on there as well. I will leave a link in the description box where you can go and ask me a question, send me a message, write me a comment um, or even just with like a topic that you want me to chat about, not a specific question but just like something like wedding flowers or um, like how did you decide on your photographer? I don't know, just things like that where if you're struggling or trying to figure out how you wanna do it, um, yeah, I'm more than happy to chat about it. And yeah, we just had the most beautiful, beautiful day. So thank you for all your love and kind words on my Instagram post. I really appreciate it. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into my bridal makeup. <laughs> so the first thing that I did, just to let you know, it is very, very hot in this room, which is probably good because it was very, very hot when I was getting ready um, on the morning of my wedding as well. Um, the room was boiling, so it's probably quite an accurate representation of how the makeup applied and weared, um, but, or even, but it is very, very warm. So if you see like pools of sweat gathering on my face, I do apologize. I have obviously moisturized this morning and I did my skincare as normal on the day. Um, I use the Unseen sunscreen, which is basically, it's from Supergoop. It's basically like a clear primer, but it's sunscreen for your face. So it protects, because I knew I was gonna be outside pretty much all day and you should wear SPF every day anyway. But this one I like because from what I've tried it with, it doesn't mess with any products you put over top of it. So it doesn't really add loads of like moisturizing qualities to your face. It just kind of sits there, protects your skin nicely from the sun and doesn't kind of add any extra stuff to your makeup. So I didn't want to try a ton of new foundations in the run up to my wedding, obviously, you do you, if you if foundation is the thing that you want to test out and, and you, you're not happy with your current foundation routine or you feel like the foundation you use isn't suitable for event makeup or wearing makeup for a long time during the day and um, doing lots of activities in it and being photographed, then try out some, some foundations. But I would recommend if you do have a foundation you already know you like to wear for events that photographs well, go for that and just practice the makeup that you want to wear with that foundation over and over again to make sure, test it in different situations so that you know if it works or not in lots of different lightings, in lots of different um, scenarios, in lots of different weathers and just make sure that it kind of stands up to the test of time. The one that I went for in the end is one that I have been using for a few years. It is the Hourglass Stick Foundation. I just love that it adds as much or as little coverage as you want, but it really kind of um, mixes with your skin's texture or heat or something. There is something that it says in the description of this foundation where it kind of like, molds with your skin to kind of mimic your natural skin texture and I really find that this does sit so naturally 
on my skin at least and it adds um, a very healthy glow but it doesn't look too sweaty it's just very naturally radiant but it's definitely not drying it, it is a glowy foundation so if you have very oily skin you might not like it but for me this was like my go-to for the wedding makeup because I just know that I love the way my skin looks when I wear it for occasions so I do have two shades I have the shade porcelain and the shade shell shell is my tan shade so this is the one that I use on the day because I did get a spray tan for my wedding day because if you're very fair skinned like me you will know that if you wear white and have very pale skin it can wash you out <laughs> so it's better to have a little bit of color especially on something as important as my wedding day I knew I wanted to have a nice tan um, so I did get a spray tan two days before my wedding so that it didn't look too intense but it was just nice and sun-kissed and this shade worked really well but I do tend to mix it when I'm not super tanned with the shade porcelain and just kind of put it like that on my face. Then I just take my Zoeva Grand Stippling brush. This is the 124 brush. Also for your wedding day, make sure you have freshly washed brushes. Um, I washed my brushes just before my wedding um, so that I knew on the day everything was clean. It's just like that fail safe foundation I always go to if I want my skin to look really perfected, even and healthy. So you wanna make sure you kind of bring it down your neck. I'm not adding extra product down there. Check um, your face in different lighting as well. Just check you don't have any foundation lines around your neck. This concealer is another one that's great for covering any blemishes and I will tell you the trick that I use to do that in a minute. Um, so this is the Oma Stay Woke Concealer. I use this all the time. I've been using, again, this is one I've been using for two years. Okay, so I really didn't need a lot of concealer today and that that's it, that's all I'm gonna use today. Um, but on the day, I will show you. So I had a little bit of a spot here, which is pretty much completely gone now. There's a tiny, tiny scar still there, but it's barely noticeable. I just put a tiny bit on here like that. I would get a little detailing brush like this and just kind of blend that in. And then when I'm doing my powder, I'll powder my whole face and then I'll take the same detailing brush, I'll go in the powder and I'll build up the powder on that spot. And then um, this is a Lisa Eldridge trick. If you are familiar with Lisa Eldridge's videos from back in the day, you will have seen this, but then you can put a tiny bit more concealer, just really concentrated on the spot, a bit more powder, and it will really like lock in the coverage for the whole day. So I did do that on the day. I did that trick and it worked really well. So I did wear an eye primer. I have just this by Beauty Bay one. It's in the shade, I don't know, but it's like my skin tone sort of shade. Very light. Um, this works really well at stopping your eyeshadow from creasing. So I just kind of pat it in my finger. And then it's another good one to let it sit before you put product on top. So next for contour, I'm gonna take my Oma double take contour wand again something i've been using since 2020 so i know works really well on my skin i don't want to use too much i'm going to go in with my zoeva grand stippling brush again and start blending for placement for contour you want to try and keep it quite high up so it really kind of lifts your cheekbones. I actually only place it on my cheek and my forehead and then I use whatever is excess uh, on my neck and my nose. I don't normally put product on those areas, like draw product onto those areas because I just find it can look a bit excessive on, on my skin. It can just look a bit much sometimes. And what I would do is like, for example, after I contoured, I would go and find the light in a different room and like, 
see what my makeup looked like in that light and then I would adjust as I needed. If I thought I needed a bit more contour, I would build it up where I wanted, but just go in with a little amount first and build it up. It's much easier to do that than take stuff away afterwards. I'm gonna use the Say Dew Blush in Rosy. Again, these shades are just very, very natural, kind of mimic my natural um, skin colors or shades like this is kind of like the shade I would naturally go if I was a bit flushed kind of bringing it up onto my temples as well again it just kind of gives the illusion of your cheek being more lifted and you can always go over top with your fingers as well to just warm up the product and blend it in with your skin a bit more. Next, I am going to generously powder with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Again, these are all products you will have seen me use in so many videos because I love them. And what I love about this is that it adds a little bit of coverage and I'm avoiding where I put the majority of my blush, my cream blush here, so that it doesn't kind of take away the dewiness from that blush, but it really sets down. And um, yeah, it adds a little bit of coverage, um, but it really kind of perfects and blurs and mattifies where you need it. So I was pretty generous with this just because I knew I was gonna be wearing this in this makeup in the heat for a long time, so I wanted to just make sure that it was well set. Okay, so I am going to put powder, blush, and bronzer on, but I think I'm gonna start on my eyes now, just so I can make sure whatever bronzer and blush I put on kind of balances out the eyes and doesn't look too intense. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl Eyes to Mesmerize. Again, this is just like the perfect natural shade for me. I've said it in my previous video, but I love this shade uh, because it's a contour, it's kind of like a contour shade for your eyes. So it's really, really easy to use. I just literally blend it with my fingers pretty much. Um, I did take a brush for my wedding day and go around the edges, but this is how I applied it first off. So I don't take a lot of product. I just really, really lightly dip in. It is very moussey texture, so you don't wanna go too overboard. But I'm just gonna take this kind of fluffy blending brush and very, very lightly blend around the edges. I'm not blending on my actual eyelid. I'm blending around the perimeter of my eyelid. Again, you can hopefully see that this side is not blended out and this side is blended out. The nice thing about this eyeshadow is it's very glossy and wet looking so it just catches the light so beautifully when you turn your head. I did also add a little pop of extra sparkle from this luxury palette of pops from Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. Again, I've talked about this a lot on my channel. I know that these are all quite high-end luxury price point products, and I am sorry that I'm not using more affordable um, makeup, but just this is realistically what I used on my own wedding day. With these particular products, I do find that they outperform my drugstore ones that I've tried. So yeah, I am really sorry about that. I know it's not the most accessible bridal makeup, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade right here on my finger, and I'm just gonna pop it right in the center. This is a much more affordable eyeliner. It's about two or three pounds, and it's really, really good. This is a brown eyeliner from the Beauty, from Beauty Bay. It is in the shade Coffee. So what I do is I just push it very lightly on my top lash and just in the outer third, and then with a very thin angled brush, I drag it across further. So the majority of the eyeliner is going to be concentrated in the outer part of your eyelid. It just makes your eyelids look more open and uh, gives it not a cat eye effect, but it kind of just 
it's more flattering to my eye shape at least. And just try and keep the brush as close to your lashes as you can. Again, for redheads, I way prefer brown eyeliner on me because it just looks a lot softer and more natural with my hair color and my skin color. So for my lower lash line, I went in very, very softly. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm just gonna kind of put it on my hand so that I can dip the brush into it. I'm gonna take the same blending brush. Now this is quite a large blending brush. So if you don't feel super confident using something like this under your eyes because you can turn into panda eyes quite quickly, use something smaller, but I have used this before so I know like how light to press to make sure that it doesn't turn into panda eyes. So I just kind of concentrate it super close to the lash line and just really, really subtly do a little bit of a smudge. It's almost unnoticeable, but it does add just a tiny bit of something. And then I think on the day I did just add to that a little bit of this eyeliner. And when I say a tiny amount, I mean barely even touch your face because if you put a lot of eyeliner underneath, for my eye shape and for my face shape, it can look very heavy very quickly and turn into panda eyes, like I said. So I am being very, very careful with this. <laughs> and I'm just gonna barely even touch my face and just do that. blend it like that and also if you want to you can take your fingers to smudge it a bit more i can't even remember if i actually did that on the day because it looks a little bit heavier than i had but i think i did so that is all i did for my eyeshadow and i'm gonna wait to put mascara on until the end um just because i don't want it to smudge whilst i'm doing my bronzer and blush and all of that but um, I will say with lashes, I did get a lash lift the week of my wedding. When you put mascara on and you have a lash lift, it really just like makes you look like you're wearing fake lashes. So if you're not sure about lashes and you're not very confident with lashes, I highly, highly recommend looking into getting an LVL treatment or a lash lift, they're the same thing. You don't have to wear any mascara with a lash lift, but for, for my wedding day, I definitely wanted to give that extra va va boom. I definitely, like I say, wanted to set everything down um, to make it last longer. So I wanted to use powder, bronzer and blush over my cream products. So I went in with this by Beauty Bay again. Can you tell the brands that I like from the makeup I'm using today? <laughs> um, this is in the shade Fawn. It's just a really good, again, an event makeup bronzer. It's the one that I always go to. Um, just a nice shade for that, for my skin tone. And I'm using the Beauty Bay 102 brush, which is just a really fluffy, um, really fluffy kind of round stippling brush. This is quite pigmented, so I'm just gonna want to press very lightly on the skin again. And I'm bringing it quite generously down my neck to just make sure everything is blended nicely. I also really like doing bronzer on my nose like this. So then the blush that I used is my Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic blush in the shade Love Glow. I've spoken about this a few times and said how I don't love this blush formula because I just think it's a bit meh. Like I think you can find blushes that are just as good at the drugstore and I still do, but I don't have a lot of powder blushes in my collection anymore because I just tend to always use cream blushes. So um, this does tend to be the blush that I gravitate towards when I'm wanting to set my cream blush, which is very, very rarely. And again, you wanna apply it kind of quite high up to lift. It does add quite a nice glow. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Nothing too crazy, but just enough to catch the light pretty much my makeup done. You will notice that I haven't applied highlighter. I brought the RMS cream highlight that I love so much. This is the Living Luminizer. So I did bring this in case I wanted to add a bit of extra glow, but because my 
my the rest of my makeup is quite glow giving and I've got a lot of cream products on and that foundation is quite glowy I didn't feel like on the day I needed to add extra glow and you want to be careful with the amount of glow you're adding when you're when you know you're going to be photographed because matte skin tends to photograph better so I just didn't want to add too much kind of glossy glow into the mix you know normally I would but what do I need to do next oh brows Ugh, brows are so boring so I just did what I normally do for my brows which is brush them up I did get my brows threaded which I hadn't done in about six months um so they had a bit more shape to them and then I just used my glossier boy brow this is in the shade blonde and I just run that through my brows again with a, quite a light hand and then I brush it out no crazy wedding brow routine I'm afraid the mascara that I used on my wedding day was the elf keep your curl mascara because that mascara is so good in that it does not smudge one bit and it adds a nice amount of length and volume at the same time but they've discontinued it so very annoyed about that i am going to use the glossier lash slick today i wouldn't recommend this as a wedding mascara just because it's maybe if you're getting the lash lift it's okay but it's just very natural to the point where it doesn't really add any volume whatsoever so if you're going to use a wedding day mascara i think it's better to have a bit more like i say va -va -voo, like a little bit more intense on the day let me know your mascara recommendations because i can no longer recommend the elf keep your curl as they've discontinued it i am absolutely gutted but it was the perfect if you still have that in your collection uh, and you're getting married soon i highly recommend it it was like the perfect mascara for my wedding day so i'm gonna use the pillow cheat lip liner to line my lips and very softly again not too intense and then i'm going to go in with jk magic which is like my perfect nude i've mentioned this a few times but i love this this is like my lips but better the perfect amount of peachy pink and nudey nude <laughs> oh god the light in this room is terrible now and then the last product the final finishing touch to this makeup is the airbrush flawless setting spray from charlotte tilbury it kind of meshes all of your makeup together so if there are any parts where you're like oh that's looking a bit dry or oh that's looking a bit like a mask on my face um this will really help to like bring that all down and mesh it all together and it will just help with the longevity of your makeup so much like at the end of the day my makeup definitely did look worn i was sweating a lot that day it was very hot but um it didn't look bad so this is the final makeup look i really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful and if you are getting married soon and you're practicing for your own bridal makeup i wish you all the best you will have an amazing day and at the end of the day it really to be honest, doesn't matter what your makeup looks like. You will look gorgeous, whatever you choose to do for your makeup because it's your day, it's about you and just enjoy it. If you enjoy it, then you will look beautiful no matter what because your joy will just shine through. So yeah, good luck if that is you coming up very soon. But yeah, other than that, I really hope you guys are well and taking care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Bye.